Guys, why don't we do a very quick recap of what we covered on today's stream? That would be very helpful. And we can sort of discuss uh, what we've been doing. Actually, maybe, maybe I'll save that for... Do I save it for Friday and do like a recap of Heaven's Ward as a whole? Or do I do it just right now? I think... I don't know whether to start doing those like daily recaps and I can just upload them and just as soon as I finish stream, just cut like the last 10 minutes of stream and then throw it up on YouTube. Super low effort, like just boom, bash, bash it out for people that don't get to check the whole VOD. They can sort of have a synopsis. I think that could be good. I'll try it today. Yeah, let's do that. So, um, we started today. Hold on. Okay. We started today at Matoya's cave because we finished Heaven's Ward last night and we were going back to Matoya with Kryal who would we had met yesterday at the end of Heaven's Ward I believe or like at the big we'd started some of 3.1 yesterday so we met Kryal Kryal is Charlayan she is a Lollafell she remembers Alphano when he was a boy see all the details coming to me uh and Alphano is a bit of a perv or something. He draws people. I don't know. Uh, so, Kryle wanted to go to Matoya because Matoya has a crystal ball, a crystal light orb that we were able to use to locate Thancred. We found Thancred's sort of energy or whatnot and went to... I don't remember the zone name. But we went to that zone. Yeah, and please in chat, feel free to correct me as and when I'm getting things wrong. So we went to the zone where Thancred might be. Meanwhile, we thought he might be interacting with the friendly NPCs. I can't remember what they're called now. Starts with a Y, I think. The, the Yan or something. And there was a primal being summoned. So we went to deal the Varth. That's the one. Yan? I don't know what they are. The Varth, and we went to deal with the Primal. Thinking Thancred might be around. In doing so, we met the Warrior of Darkness. The Warrior of Dark- This is actually a really good recap to do these as well, actually. This is very helpful at the end of a stream. So the Warrior of Darkness and his buddies, I initially thought might have been posing, because when we finished Heaven's World, we, we, we saw the Warrior of Darkness, and he's standing on the moon with Elidibus. And, uh, Elidibus is like, all right, time for you to get to work, bro. Sort of sends him in, like, the Terminator or something, you know? Or, like, that Will Smith, Smith movie. You know the Will Smith movie where it's, like, it's not our robot. Basically our robot. But there's, like, an evil Will Smith. That's him. It's a clone of him. It's kind of like that. And they send him, the Warrior of Darkness in. I thought the Warrior of Darkness, when we see him kill the Primal, and also then we meet him... You have the Echo with him, and he's killing an Asian. And in my head, I thought, oh, I bet the Warrior of Darkness has been sent down to be an imposter. Because he's killed an Asian, and we Echo with him, and he's killed a Primal. Which are two things that support us. Which is not sort of following the line of my theory of this game, which is this game is a big game of Splatoon between... Hydaelyn and Zodiac, and they're playing a game of Splatoon. Spreading and neutralizing chaos, right? So I thought the Warrior of Darkness was going to try and be an imposter. But he's not. He is actually a naughty boy. Because he then turns to us and goes, Oh, I am the Warrior of Darkness. Which you wouldn't really say that if you were an imposter. So he announces his sort of presence to us. And then disappears and we're like all right well that was weird and then Thancred comes down oh yeah Thancred comes down in that moment and defends us which is cool so we got Thancred back but he his eye is covered up and I wonder if it's anything similar to Ishtola and it sort of gets mentioned right where I'm worried about uh, or I'm thinking about Thancred's life force and the fact that Thancred uh was in the live stream and we know that Ishtola has like a uh, faster sort of lifespan or a shorter lifespan because of the live stream and the influences of the teleportation magic she implemented. So I was wondering if Thancred has a similar thing and that's why his eyes covered. Maybe it's similar to uh, Yishtalas. Then, 
what happened after that? Then we came... Uh, well, then we went to Vidofnia, right? And we were like, yo, Vidofnia. Uh... <sighs> what happened after that? Oh, give me a sec on that, Sentiax. Yeah, taxing us Oh, she's taxing herself to be able to see Aether. Okay. Shall I got blinded in the live stream and be able to see people's Aether now? Yeah, that's why she's being taxed. Okay. Okay. She should really keep her uh, Aether in an offshore account, and then that way, um, she shouldn't really be taxed. So, I, I can't remember what happened next, but then we went to Vidofnia and said... Uh, that things are good now, and we killed a primal. And then Vidofnia was like, yo, cool, I'm gonna come hang out with you guys in Ishgard, if you don't mind. And we were like, yeah, dope, all right, see you there. We come back, and Emmerich gets knifed, gets gibbed, bro. In the rain as well, it happened in the rain. So he gets stabbed, and we're like, oh shit, that's bad. I thought he was dead, and he probably should have died, and I would have been really sad, because he's my favorite character. And then, we we came back, found out that he'd been stabbed. We were like, oh, no, this is bad. Is he okay? And they were like, Lucia's like, yeah, he's chilling. He's fine. Don't worry about it. Meanwhile, there's fires. There's sort of mini, uh, not like riots, but there's like, it's going bad in the city, right? It's going d down in Little Alamigo, you know what I mean? Uh, and just merely a flesh wound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we start figuring out where all these fires are coming from. Meanwhile, the church is, like, taking in refugees, and I'm immediately like, okay, the church is sussy because religion is sussy. Because it's always sussy, bro. So, we deal, uh, we, we go and figure out who's starting these fires. We Thancred questions the lad, and he goes, oh, it, it was, you know, it was basically the church. We then find out, uh, Emmerich comes into the room, with Lucia, and Emmerich's like, yo, I'm good now, don't worry about it, merely a flesh wound. Then, a guy comes, a guard comes running in the, in the room, and he's like, yo, the church has kidnapped everyone, all the refugees and everyone, and they want Emmerich to kill himself. Oh, and, uh, Altina, thank you very much for the tier one too much, I really, really appreciate that, thank you. No more ads, huh? Not doing the recap. And then, what happens is, oops, oh my god, I just banned you, wait, oh, this is a misclick. Unban. Oh, this is all going wrong. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. This is the second time I've done that today. That's the second time I've accidentally banned someone in chat. Sorry. Sorry, mid. You're fine. Oh god. Oh god. Oh no. It's when I'm tabbing back into my Streamlabs or my OBS. Whoops. Toxic streamer. So, without getting too derailed, we go into the church. We fail the duty, and the game asks us if we want to do it on very, very easy. So then we have to, uh, then we have to go back to the, we try and do the duty a second time. This time we managed to do it without Emmerich dying. And then the priest throws a little girl off the building and tries to kill her. And I was kind of hoping that the little girl was going to die, because I would have really respected this video game for being pretty dark, but also it's like a kid's game, so you probably shouldn't do that. Oftentimes, children probably don't like watching themselves be killed in video games and media in general, so that was probably fine that the kid didn't die, but it would have been pretty dope. Uh, besides, they were from like Somerset or some shit, they were British, so we're not even bothered if they died anyway. But luckily, Vidofnia shows up at the right moment and saves the day, saves the girl. And in doing so, kind of works really well because potentially makes those in the city of, where are we, like Ishgard, of uh, the Pillars. The people within the city, uh, that's not the name of the city, but you know what I'm talking about. Can now see that the dragons are actually pretty good and maybe they're here to help us and not to destroy us So maybe that will help lead towards a time of peace we speak to uh, Like sort of the whole gang and everyone's like right. Let's get back to work uh, Yastala then says that she thinks that Thancred is sort of not 
100%. Maybe he can't use magic anymore. So that's something that we're going to look out for. Also, I'm trying to think if I missed anything. If I miss anything, please tell me. And then... We see Orianger conspiring with the Asians potentially. I mean, he doesn't actually say anything. So I don't know whether to think he's actually conspiring with the Asians because he was in a deep, he was in a secret library. I don't know whether he's actually conspiring with the Asians or if we just caught him. Getting dizzy? Yeah, sorry. I'm just running around. This is my laps around, uh, laps around the pillow. So then we see Alice, I think. I don't think it was Alphano, because Alphano's here. So I think it was Alice, and I have been wondering where the hell Alice has been. So that's really cool. I think Alice is my favorite character so far, based on the fact that she's just been doing her own thing. And then suddenly she's come in for coils, which was cool as hell. And then also she's come in for that scene and I'm like okay I think Alice is the smartest one here she seems to have stuff figured out so that was pretty cool we found out about uh four tomes how the count is going to step down and that's just like a nice moment I don't think that'll really lead into anything but that's just like a cute moment a couple things that I've started questioning today during the questing and I guess the last thing then is we saw Papalamo and Yida are still alive and they're preparing for battle against the empire cool so some of the main characters sort of splintering off doing their own tasks now and following their own journeys, which I think is kind of cool. Quite kind of neat for a story, and I'm sure it will all lead together eventually. Kind of reminds me of Stranger Things, where you have, like, multiple subgroups of characters that are tackling their own battle, and eventually all those battles lead together, and without any one of those single things occurring, the whole battle wouldn't have culminated the way that it did. So they just, unbeknownst to them, are working together, you know? So that's kind of cool. A couple theories I've had so far today in the process of my MSQ. I've started to question why we're on this planet. Like, in the sense of... It was something that Matoya says. There's some certain wording that Matoya says, or when we're speaking to Matoya, and we're talking about, like, warriors of light, warriors of darkness, and I think it was this discussion of warriors in general that I started to think about the two sides of like Hydaelyn and Zodiac and I, I I pose them as like, I've already said about this game of Splatoon between the two forces, but it's also made me think about like, Hydaelyn is on one side, Zodiac's on the other and they're both just floating in space like right on, off of like the planet of the star. And then the star is in the middle and like it's just like mom and dad's getting a divorce and we're just getting tug of war and it's like why are we being tug of war it's kind of like a game of league of legends where you've got your two you know you got your two uh your two forces on either side your two bases on either side so that's where i'm out where i'm kind of thinking like i wonder what's so special about this planet that like hydalin and zodiac are both fighting for it but it's the same thing with like World of Warcraft, right? Where it's like, why are we on Azeroth? Why does everyone, why does Sargeras and everybody want, you know, what sword? Why does everybody want Azeroth? And it's like, well, because you have to tell your story somewhere. So it's like, you know, um, it's like, we should let him cook more. Is my cooking good? Okay, cool. As long as it's interesting to listen to. But yeah, my, my theories sort of having been developed, I'll, I'll sort of include this here, but my theories having been developed since finishing Heaven's Ward is sort of thinking about so it, this is going to be on youtube as well right so i know people in chat probably already heard this but for anyone watching on youtube now i'm thinking about the idea so i watched the legend of korra and if you haven't seen the legend of korra there's two forces in that that are basically equal and opposite and are both vying for the same power which reminds me pretty much exactly what i think is happening with zodiac and hydaelyn with Rava and Vishnu or some shit? Who is it? Rava and who? And Vatu. Rava and Vatu, who are basically like, as one gets stronger, the other gets weaker, but neither force can really ever kill the other one, but they're constantly battling. But like, so that's what I think, like that's where I'm sort of at with the story right now, based on just, and again, like a game of Splatoon, right? As the Asians are going ho over here, sowing chaos, 
we're over here killing primals and doing good things, and then we sort of rotate around the map, and then it's like, oh, suddenly they're creating chaos where we just were, and then we're sort of undoing the chaos that they've wrought, and it's like this constant uh, battle back and forth, but what it's culminating in, I don't know, because in my head, like, this kind of brings all that morally gray stuff around, where I'm like, well, are we truly the good guys? You know, I speak, we look at Merlwib, and Merlwib's saying about killing the beast tribes, I think, and I'm like, well, we're encroaching on their land, like, the Empire has caused everyone to sort of be a little bit more condensed, and us killing the beastmen, like, that's not cool. No wonder they're summoning their primal because they're scared, they're afraid. So are we really the good guys? Maybe we could try and live in harmony. So that's what I've been thinking there. And then, and then that makes me think about the story with uh, Zodiac and Hydaelyn. And I'm like, maybe neither force can truly kill the other force because they, they sort of rely on each other, right? It's that whole idea of, like, wherever there is light, there is shadow. You know what I mean? Or, like, whatever the shit the thing is. Um, like, the brightest light casts the darkest shadows, or like, <laughs> live, laugh, love, you know? Like, whatever the shit that is, that's where I'm at. So those are all my, thor my theories right now, uh, having finished Heaven's Ward in 3.1. Still got 3.2, still got 3.3 to completely finish Heaven's Ward, and then we'll figure out where to go from there. But I wanted to talk about myself so far from today's stream, and that's where we're at.